Earlier this month, Ukraine's parliament postponed voting on constitutional amendments it agreed to in Minsk a year ago. Even that wasn't enough for some people. Even saying we might eventually vote on this special status for the Donbass is a disgrace. It's carrying out Putin's plan. It's not only firebrand radicals who oppose the deal, which would grant autonomy to the eastern areas currently held by separatists, whilst bringing them back under formal Ukrainian sovereignty. Inclusion of uh, this part of Ukraine must take place only after liberalization and deoccupation and deseparatization of this part of Ukraine. In other words, not while these guys are still around. Fighters from the Luhansk People's Republic, many of whom are volunteers or mercenaries from Russia. This river separates their territory from the rest of Ukraine. What happened to your flag? I can't really tell from the accents where they're from. One sounds Russian, the others maybe not. There used to be a ferry here. In this area, fighting has died down, though Ukrainian soldiers say separatist groups cross the river at night and lay mines. Villages in the militarized zone are isolated, cut off from the regional capital, and dependent on aid. This is a children's kit from the charity SOS East. I always try to bring one when I visit places where there are small children. Ukrainian officers here maintain good relations with the locals. But there's still great bitterness towards Kiev to be found, even here on the Ukrainian side of the front line. 30 years down the mine I worked, and now I don't even get free medicine. I don't even know what's in our leaders' heads. The people are suffering, and they just steal and steal and steal. Yanukovych was a thief, but this lot, they're even worse. the sound of the ceasefire in Pisky. This is the nearest Ukrainian-held village to Donetsk. Barely a dozen people still live here. The separatists don't respect the ceasefire at all. Right now they're trying to test us and to get us to shoot back so that they can locate our positions. In Donetsk, the self-declared authorities blame Kiev for the ceasefire violations. At ceremonies like this, they regularly trumpet their independence and show no inclination to give up on statehood and rejoin Ukraine. Ukraine has not observed the ceasefire, nor adopted the new constitution, nor passed a law on a special status for the Donbas. And most importantly, they won't hold talks with us. And if that doesn't happen, the Minsk agreement means nothing. It's unlikely Zaharchenko would talk so tough if he was feeling any pressure from the Kremlin to comply with Minsk. The separatists are dependent on Russian support. Yet lately there have been signs that support might not be eternal. Above this beauty parlour in central Moscow were the offices of the pro-Kremlin Union of Donbass Volunteer Fighters. Today they're careful not to rule out giving the region back to Ukraine. Whether Donetsk and Luhansk should enter some future Ukrainian federation is a difficult question that should be decided by the people of those regions in a referendum. But that softer stance doesn't really mean Russia is making concessions, says Stanislav Belkovsky, an independent political analyst. The Minsk agreements really only give Ukraine formal control over Donetsk and Luhansk, while in practice they are autonomous, i.e. controlled by Moscow. So what Putin is trying to present as a compromise is actually just a bid to buy time, while he coaxes the US and EU into holding talks with him on a new world order, whilst at the same time painting Ukraine as a country that can't keep its promises. Seen from this perspective, whatever the fate of the Minsk agreements, the winner is Moscow.